for that fine statement. Um, and General Brown, welcome to this committee. Um, I um, welcome your nomination to serve as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. It's uh, great to see that you are accompanied by your wife, Shireen, and um, the chair has also acknowledged your son, Sean and Ross, who are supporting their daddy throughout the confirmation process. As you testify before us and uh, prepare to assume the senior most position in the U.S. military, you are uh, continuing with a profound concept that dates back to the founding of our republic, uh, dates back to uh, the, before our Constitution, to the days of George Washington, where we established and we maintain the proposition that the military in our country is answerable to the civilian elected leadership of our country. You've been uh, nominated by our commander in chief for the senior most position. And um, I believe you're exceptionally qualified for this position. Um, and we certainly need, Mr. Chairman, we need um, an exceptionally qualified officer during this perilous national moment. Mr. Chairman and members of the committee, um, multiple senior national defense leaders have told this committee we are in the most dangerous global security environment since World War II, and I agree. During that pivotal time, 70 years ago, our country faced two great military powers across different oceans with the capability and intent to threaten American domestic security directly. We see a similar dual threat today, which the chair has already alluded to. The Chinese Communist Party is conducting the largest and most rapid military buildup in modern history, surpassing our own military in many places. It is a military built for a single purpose, to undermine Indo-Pacific and American security and prosperity by expanding the Chinese Communist Party's totalitarian influence to the entire globe. In Europe, the Kremlin's brutal war in Ukraine is the most dangerous crisis we have faced in half a century, and their self-defeating war of aggression has brought China, North Korea, and Iran all closer together. This dangerous moment demands an exceptionally competent set of uniformed leaders. Regrettably, many Americans have lost confidence in our senior military leadership, which for the past 20 years had been very high. While we all may debate the reasons, I believe that the lack of accountability for failures among military leadership being thrust in the spotlight of politically divisive issues like critical race theory and abortion have significantly contributed to this decline in trust. General Brown speaks often of accelerating innovation in the Air Force. He recognizes the difficulties of doing so amid an entrenched bureaucracy. And he's open about how he has learned in his job and improved his approach. That candor and self-accountability should serve him well in this new role, including as an example to other officers. I'm hopeful that General Brown's detailed focus on innovation and culture change will bring new thinking and action to the massive problems of our joint force that, that our joint force faces. I hope General Brown will continue to focus on restoring a culture built on meritocracy in the U.S. military that considerably that continuously fosters new approaches to readiness in warfighting. Make no mistake, the next few years will be critical for our national security. As General Brown has stated, we cannot wait for a crisis to drive change for our joint force. Years of lackluster budgeting for our national defense has put us far behind where we need to be. We have a bureaucracy and industrial base that is clunky and military promotion system geared toward risk aversion. It will take honest and realistic threat and capability assessments from our senior uniform leaders to empower lower level, lower level personnel to fix the many problems we face. I expect General Brown will offer his most frank, unreserved military judgment, both to the President and to Congress if confirmed. 
During a similarly decisive moment for our national defense in 1980, then-candidate Reagan spoke of the need for a renaissance in American military superiority, American military superiority to avoid war with the Soviets, to avoid war. Reagan said, our best hope of persuading them to live in peace is to convince them they cannot win at war. We avoided war then, but only because we had leaders who were bold enough to pursue the wisdom of peace through strength with alacrity. That timeless advice still applies today, and I'm hopeful our nominee agrees. Thank you, General Brown, for being here, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Wood.